one side to think up a plan, it wouldn't be proper for us to take this abundant wealth back to our own homes. Why don't we build a home for King Mahasadasana? They went up to the king and said, We shall have a home built for you, sire. King Mahasadasana consented in silence. And then Saka, Lord of Gods, knowing what the king was thinking, addressed the god Visekama, Come, dear Visekama, build a palace named Principal as a home for King Mahasadasana. Yes, Lord, replied Visekama. Then, as easily as a strong person would extend or contract their arm, he vanished from the gods of the thirty-three and appeared in front of King Mahasadasana. Visekama said to the king, I shall build a palace named Principal as a home for you, sire. King Mahasadasana consented in silence. And so that's what Visekama did. The palace of Principal stretched for a league from east to west, and half a league from north to south. It was lined with tiles of four colors, three fathoms high, made of gold, silver, beryl, and crystal. It had eighty-four thousand pillars of four colors, made of gold, silver, beryl, and crystal. It was covered with panels of four colors, made of gold, silver, beryl, and crystal. It had twenty-four staircases of four colors, made of gold, silver, beryl, and crystal. The Golden Stairs had posts of gold and banisters and finials of silver. The silver stairs had posts of silver and banisters and finials of gold. The barrel stairs had posts of barrel and banisters and finials of crystal. The crystal stairs had posts of crystal and banisters and finials of barrel. It had 84,000 chambers of four colors, made of gold, silver, barrel, and crystal. In each chamber a couch was spread in the golden chamber a couch of silver, in the silver chamber a couch of beryl, in the beryl chamber a couch of ivory, in the crystal chamber a couch of hardwood. At the door of the golden chamber stood a palm tree of silver, with trunk of silver, and leaves and fruits of gold. At the door of the silver chamber stood a palm tree of gold, with trunk of gold, and leaves and fruits of silver. At the door of the beryl chamber stood a palm tree of crystal, with trunk of crystal, and leaves and fruits of beryl. At the door of the crystal chamber stood a palm tree of beryl, with trunk of beryl, and leaves and fruits of crystal. Then King Mahasadasana thought, why don't I build a grove of golden palm trees at the door to the great foyer, where I can sit for the day. So that's what he did. The palace of principal was surrounded by two balustrades, made of gold and silver. The golden balustrades had posts of gold and banisters and finials of silver. The silver balustrades had posts of silver and banisters and finials of gold. The palace of principal was surrounded by two nets of bells, made of gold and silver. The golden net had bells of silver, and the silver net had bells of gold. When those nets of bells were blown by the wind they sounded graceful, tantalizing, sensuous, lovely and intoxicating, like a quintet made up of skilled musicians who had practiced well and kept excellent rhythm. And any addicts, libertines, or drunkards in Kusavetai at that time were entertained by that sound. When it was finished, the palace was hard to look at, dazzling to the eyes, like the sun rising in a clear and cloudless sky in the last month of the rainy season. Then King Mahasadasana thought, why don't I build a lotus pond named Principal in front of the palace. So that's what he did. The lotus pond of principal stretched for a league from east to west, and half a league from north to south. It was lined with tiles of four colors, made of gold, silver, beryl, and crystal. It had twenty-four staircases of four colors, made of gold, silver, beryl, and crystal. The golden stairs had posts of gold and banisters and finials of silver. The silver stairs had posts of silver and banisters and finials of gold. The barrel stairs had posts of barrel and banisters and finials of crystal. The crystal stairs had posts of crystal and banisters and finials of barrel. It was surrounded by two balustrades, made of gold and silver. The golden balustrades had posts of gold and banisters and finials of silver. The silver balustrades had posts of silver and banisters and finials of gold. 
It was surrounded by seven rows of palm trees, made of gold, silver, beryl, crystal, ruby, emerald, and all precious things. The golden palms had trunks of gold, and leaves and fruits of silver. They Silver palms had trunks of silver, and leaves and fruits of gold. The beryl palms had trunks of beryl, and leaves and fruits of crystal. The crystal palms had trunks of crystal, and leaves and fruits of beryl. The ruby palms had trunks of ruby, and leaves and fruits of emerald. The emerald palms had trunks of emerald, and leaves and fruits of ruby. The palms of all precious things had trunks of all precious things, and leaves and fruits of all precious things. When those rows of palm trees were blown by the wind they sounded graceful, tantalizing, sensuous, lovely, and intoxicating, like a quintet made up of skilled musicians who had practiced well and kept excellent rhythm. And any addicts, libertines, or drunkards in Qsavetai at that time were entertained by that sound. When the palace and its lotus pond were finished, King Mahasudasana served those who were reckoned as true ascetics and Brahmins with all they desired. Then he ascended the palace of principle. 5. Attaining Absorption Then King Mahasudasana thought, Of what deed of mine is this the fruit and result, that I am now so mighty and powerful? Then King Mahasudasana thought, It is the fruit and result of three kinds of deeds, giving, self-control, and restraint. Then he went to the great foyer, stood at the door, and was inspired to exclaim, Stop here, sensual, malicious, and cruel thoughts, no further. Then he entered the great foyer and sat on the golden couch. Quite secluded from sensual pleasures, secluded from unskillful qualities, he entered and remained in the first absorption, which has the rapture and bliss born of seclusion, while placing the mind and keeping it connected. As the placing of the mind and keeping it connected were stilled, he entered and remained in the second absorption, which has the rapture and bliss born of immersion, with internal clarity and confidence, and unified mind, without placing the mind and keeping it connected. And with the fading away of rapture, he entered and remained in the third absorption, where he meditated with equanimity. Mindful and aware, personally experiencing the bliss of which the noble ones declare, equanimous and mindful, one meditates in bliss. With the giving up of pleasure and pain, and the ending of former happiness and sadness, he entered and remained in the fourth absorption, without pleasure or pain, with pure equanimity and mindfulness. Then King Mahasudasana left the great foyer and entered the golden chamber, where he sat on the golden couch. He meditated spreading a heart full of love to one direction, and to the second, and to the third, and to the fourth. In the same way he spread a heart full of love above, below, across, everywhere, all around, to everyone in the world, abundant, expansive, limitless, free of enmity and ill will. He meditated spreading a heart full of compassion. He meditated spreading a heart full of rejoicing. He meditated spreading a heart full of equanimity to one direction, and to the second, and to the third, and to the fourth. In the same way above, below, across, everywhere, all around, he spread a heart full of equanimity to the whole world, abundant, expansive, limitless, free of enmity and ill will. Six of all cities King Mahasudasana had 84,000 cities, with the royal capital of Qsavetai foremost. He had 84,000 palaces, with the palace of principal foremost. He had 84,000 chambers, with the great foyer foremost. He had 84,000 couches made of gold, silver, ivory, and hardwood. They were spread with woolen covers, shag-piled, pure white, or embroidered with flowers, and spread with a fine deer hide, with a canopy above and red pillows at both ends. He had 84,000 bull elephants with gold adornments and banners, covered with gold netting, with the royal bull elephant named Sabbath foremost. He had 84,000 horses with gold adornments and banners, covered with gold netting, with the royal steed named Thundercloud foremost. He had 84,000 chariots upholstered with the hide of lions, tigers, and leopards, and cream rugs, with gold adornments and banners, covered with gold netting, 
with the chariot named Triumph foremost. He had 84,000 jewels, with the jewel treasure foremost. He had 84,000 women, with Queen Subhada foremost. He had 84,000 householders, with the householder treasure foremost. He had 84,000 aristocrat vassals, with the councillor treasure foremost. He had 84,000 milk cows with silken reins and bronze pails. He had 8,400 million fine cloths of linen, silk, wool, and cotton. He had 84,000 servings of food, which were presented to him as offerings in the morning and evening. Now at that time his 84,000 royal elephants came to attend on him in the morning and evening. Then King Mahasudasana thought, what if instead half of the elephants took turns to attend on me at the end of each century? He instructed the councillor treasure to do this, and so it was done. 7. The visit of Queen Subhada then, after many years, many hundred years, many thousand years had passed, Queen Subhada thought, it is long since I have seen the king. Why don't I go to see him? So the queen addressed the ladies of the harem, Come, bathe your heads and dress in yellow. It is long since we saw the king, and we shall go to see him. Yes, ma'am, replied the ladies of the harem. They did as she asked and returned to the queen. Then the queen addressed the councillor treasure, Dear councillor treasure, please ready the army with four divisions. It is long since we saw the king, and we shall go to see him. Yes, my queen, he replied, and did as he was asked. He informed the queen, My queen, the army with four divisions is ready, please go at your convenience. Then Queen Subhada together with the ladies of the harem went with the army to the palace of principal. She ascended the palace and went to the great foyer, where she stood leaning against a doorpost. Hearing them, the king thought, What's that, it sounds like a big crowd. Coming out of the foyer, he saw Queen Subhada leaning against a doorpost and said to her, Please stay there, my queen, don't enter in here. Then he addressed a certain man, Come, mister, bring the golden couch from the great foyer and set it up in the golden palm grove. Yes, your majesty, that man replied, and did as he was asked. The king laid down in the lion's posture, on the right side, placing one foot on top of the other, mindful and aware. Then Queen Subhada thought, the king's faculties are so very clear, and the complexion of his skin is pure and bright. Let him not pass away. She said to him, Sire, you have eighty-four thousand cities, with the royal capital of Qusavati foremost. Arouse desire for these. Take an interest in life. And she likewise urged the king to live on by taking an interest in all his possessions as described above. When the queen had spoken, the king said to her, For a long time, my queen, you have spoken to me with loving, desirable, pleasant, and agreeable words. And yet in my final hour, your words are undesirable, unpleasant, and disagreeable. Then how exactly, your majesty, am I to speak to you? Like this, my queen, sire, we must be parted and separated from all we hold dear and beloved. Don't pass away with concerns. Such concern is suffering, and it's criticized. Sire, you have 84,000 cities, with the royal capital of Qusavati foremost. Give up desire for these. Take no interest in life. And so on for all the king's possessions. When the king had spoken, Queen Subhada cried and burst out in tears. Wiping away her tears, the queen said to the king, Sire, we must be parted and separated from all we hold dear and beloved. Don't pass away with concerns. Such concern is suffering, and it's criticized. Sire, you have 84,000 cities, with the royal capital of Qusavati foremost. Give up desire for these. Take no interest in life. And she continued, listing all the king's possessions. A rebirth in the Brahma realm not long after that. King Mahasudasana passed away. And the feeling he had close to death was like a householder or their child falling asleep after eating a delectable meal. When he passed away King Mahasudasana was reborn in a good place, 
a Brahma realm. Ananda, King Mahasadasana played children's games for 84,000 years. He ruled as viceroy for 84,000 years. He ruled as king for 84,000 years. He led the spiritual life as a layman in the palace of principle for 84,000 years. And having developed the four Brahma meditations, when his body broke up, after death, he was reborn in a good place, a Brahma realm. Now, Ananda, you might think, surely King Mahasadasana must have been someone else at that time. But you should not see it like that. I myself was King Mahasadasana at that time. Mine were the 84,000 cities, with the royal capital of Kusavati foremost. And mine were all the other possessions. Of those 84,000 cities, I only stayed in one, the capital Kusavati. Of those 84,000 mansions, I only dwelt in one, the palace of principle. Of those 84,000 chambers, I only dwelt in the great foyer. Of those 84,000 couches, I only used one, made of gold or silver or ivory or heartwood. Of those 84,000 bull elephants, I only rode one, the royal bull elephant named Sabbath. Of those 84,000 horses, I only rode one, the royal horse named Thundercloud. Of those 84,000 chariots, I only rode one, the chariot named Triumph. Of those 84,000 women, I was only served by one, a maiden of the aristocratic or merchant classes. Of those 8 billion 400 million cloths, I only wore one pair, made of fine linen, cotton, silk, or wool. Of those 84,000 servings of food, I only had one, eating at most a serving of rice and suitable sauce. See, Ananda. All those conditioned phenomena have passed, ceased, and perished. So impermanent are conditions, so unstable are conditions, so unreliable are conditions. This is quite enough for you to become disillusioned, dispassionate, and freed regarding all conditions. Six times, Ananda, I recall having laid down my body at this place. And the seventh time was as a wheel-turning monarch, a just and principled king, at which time my dominion extended to all four sides, I achieved stability in the country, and I possessed the seven treasures. But Ananda, I do not see any place in this world with its gods, Maras and Brahmas, this population with its ascetics and Brahmins, its gods and humans where the realized one would lay down his body for the eighth time. That is what the Buddha said. Then the Holy One, the teacher, went on to say. Oh! Conditions are impermanent. Their nature is to rise and fall. Having arisen, they cease. Their stilling is true bliss. https